All right, let's talk about some fucking movies. Let's start with Dark Ride. So this was requested by Peter Benevente, who just became a patron of mine and has uh, coughed up some serious cash for these reviews. So he asked me if I could do Dark Ride, Cry Wolf, and Stay Alive. And he's like, you can pick one of the three, or I'll pay you more if you want to do all three. And I was like, well, I mean, uh, I'm not opposed to getting paid more. So not only did he become a patron, but he also threw me an extra $30 to review two other movies into my PayPal account. And uh, I bought Midsommar's Director's Cut European Blu-ray with that money. So you bought me Midsommar. Finally. I've been waiting to only buy the director's cut. I don't want the fucking theatrical one. I want the director's cut. It's coming from... I don't even know what country it's coming from, but thank you, thank you, thank you to Peter for all of this. I'm going to get Dark Ride, Cry Wolf, and uh, Stay Alive done. I actually went out and bought a copy of Stay Alive just for this today. Um, So I'll get to it really, really soon. So, Dark Ride, which is a slasher flick. This actually would have been a good slasher Sunday, but, you know, with him paying that much, (laughs) I wanted to get these done as fast... Can can you even pick that up? Anyway. uh, As fast as possible. Do I have anything in my teeth? I probably do. I'm eating... (laughs) Man, I am the most unprofessional fucking movie critiquer? A critic? I'm not a critic movie fanatic on online i swear to god i don't give a shit though that's the fun right all right so this is an after dark horror fest movie from year one right this is year one yeah this should be year one i have all of them yeah this is year one you know honestly i was surprised i really liked this i really liked this you know it's got like a 4.1 or something on imdb and a lot of people are like cliche trash this and that Okay, is it cliche trash? Yes and no. I mean, is it cliche? Absolutely, 100%. I mean, there's nothing in this movie original. But what's funny to me is I'll watch something like Cold Prey, perfect example. People love Cold Prey. It's got like a 6.2 on IMDb. The second one has like a 6.1. And I'm going to review Cold Prey 2 here right after this. Both, especially the first one, they have no gore, no good kills, no nudity, and the characters are all just kind of very generic to me. This movie has memorable characters, great kills, and awesome nudity. There is one chick in this who gets nude in it, and she is fucking gorgeous, and her tits are incredible. And she shows them, and they actually do like a gratuitous, no taste, don't give a shit, this is what our audience is here for, close up, where it's just the tits in frame, and then they pan up to her face, and then they show them again, and then they show them again, and it's wonderful. Show me tits, this is a slasher movie, yes, a hot naked chick, yes, great kills, man, super graphic gory kills in places. There was one, I was like, damn, that was really fucking awesome, like... There's a cop death in this. I'll jump the gun here, but he gets split straight down the center. And it's like this really long, slow, patient gore shot where like he just sits there and you can tell it's like it's a um a prosthetic, like it's it's a it's a prosthetic head. It's not the guy's actual head, but it looks really good and his eye like turns upwards and it's all blood red underneath and his lip is quivering but the whole face is just split enough in the middle to where it's halved and then just slowly after maybe like 10 seconds of just lingering on this like uh, quivering lip and this eye turning up and everything then the head finally just starts to slowly separate and flop open it's awesome Fucking awesome kill. Ten times, a thousand times better than anything in the two Cold Prey movies that I've watched. I haven't seen the third one yet, but of those movies, everyone loves them. There's not a fucking memorable kill in the whole thing. That one destroys all the kills in Cold Prey 1 and 2 combined. 
So what the fuck? Why do people love that movie and this one's trashed? And then the characters. There's actually memorable characters. My favorite character in this being Big Daddy. Which is funny because when it started, there's something about the guy's face that's very douchey to me. Like his big jaw and his teeth. And when he talks, it's very 90s. This film feels like it was made in the 90s. Like, I wouldn't be surprised to find out that this was filmed in the 90s. And then they just didn't, like, shelved it and didn't release it until 2006. I think is the first year of Are You, uh, Are you Afraid of the Dark? Uh, after Dark Horror Fest. But what's funny about him is he came on the screen and I was like, Oh, this is going to be the annoying character. This is going to be the guy you want dead. And throughout the movie, he really won me over to the point where he's... where Okay, not only was it where he was killed at the end did I like kind of get really like no don't kill him because he survived it was over you know and then they have the twist but in addition to that like I sat there and was like you know going through like well okay he stabbed him here and I mean the cops were coming and he didn't finish the job so I'm gonna go with that Jim lives or Big Daddy or whatever um I think his name's actually Jim in the movie, but I was actually so attached to him that I actually filled in like, oh, he probably survived. Where he was stabbed and this and that, he, he you know, I, I'm going to say the cops got there in time, you know, the, the ambulance arrived and saved him. I really liked him. I thought a lot of his lines were funny, and plus I just thought he was a really, like, misunderstood dude. Like, yes, he comes off very douchey, but it's very, it's very much a facade. And throughout the movie, I feel like he's actually a really nice guy. Like, he actually has a heart. And it's, I don't know, I, I'm not used to that character. It's actually the main guy that ends up being the biggest douchebag of the movie, who is, like, cheating on his girlfriend and threatening to fucking, like, hit her or something. Like, he was a total piece of shit. And he dies first. And his death, we don't see his death on screen. In fact, I, I'm, I don't, okay, I don't know. I'd have to line it up because I didn't remember the twist. Um, Ham, Ham Porter from Sandlot, which is all I'm calling him in this, Hamilton. Well, so we're just going to call him Ham, so you know what I'm talking about. What's his name in this? I can't even remember his name in this, weirdly. But uh, Ham, we're going with Ham. I don't know if he killed anybody else in this movie. In fact, I, I don't think he killed anybody, right? I'm sticking with that Jim lift. <laughs> um, but when he... Okay, so they find Dickhead's body, right? And he's strung up because the killer in the movie who reminds me of either A, the killer from uh, The Hills Run Red, or, um, and I'd have to look up a picture, because in my head this is what he looks like, but uh, the guys who come in and rob Captain Spaulding in the beginning of House of a Thousand Corpses, little Dick Wick played with his prick, that, it, doesn't it? Stop saying that, singing that song, I hate that song. Doesn't he look just like that? I'd have to look at him side by side, but in my head, when I saw this guy, I was like, that's a little dick wick. Or maybe it's the other guy that looks like that, the, the other asshole who, um, you know, robs him. I, I don't remember which one, but I swear one of them is wearing a mask like that, and l body type looks very similar, and they both have bald heads or something. So I could be wrong, but that's, that's the first thing that came to my mind when I saw the killer in this. The killer in this mask is okay. I think The Hills Run Red actually has one of the creepiest looking killers in the last like 20 years. Although I don't think the movie's all that great, I do think the look of the killer is excellent. Um, this one, I feel like they could have spiced it up a little more. Just the mask on his face looked awkward. It didn't look scary. It just kind of looked not... I don't want to go as far as to say silly because he didn't look like I was going to laugh if he ran through the door at me. It was just kind of like... Mm, aesthetically, I don't feel like it was as creepy as they were going for. That's my take on it anyways. But regardless, it's not a bad look. It's just an eh. Like, mm, it was all right. Kind of look. All right, let's get in back into my notes. All right, so we've got the film geek in this, such as Ham's character. And of course, he's looked at like an asshole when he's referencing these movies. And... <laughs> I can relate, my friend. I can relate. There's all, especially at my job. Well, you know, being a hairdresser for so many years, I'll bring up movies. And it's funny because you always kind of disconnect yourself from everyone else at times where you think they're you. 
And so you just start talking, and then there will be a moment where you catch yourself and you go, wait, he's probably not a total fucking loser like me who just sits at home and watches movies and obsesses over every single little intricate detail of every stupid movie ever made. And so you're like, oh, uh, do you know a movie that's from? And they're like, that's from a movie? And you're like, oh, never mind, never mind, let's just stop. So, yeah, I get it. Now, I'd have to rewind it, but when they're packing up to leave, do they not leave a fucking suitcase like right next to the car and then just drive off is that a fuck up is that a goof is that like a joke is that i swear i saw a piece of luggage like a full-on bag of luggage just sitting there by the car when they drove away i, I wanted to rewind it but I, it, it, I was being lazy i'm over on the couch it's an xbox controller it has to be plugged in blah 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 so i had to like get up and go over and i was tired and i was like ah I'm like i think that's what i saw but maybe it wasn't um, and of course he got the order orderlies fucking with the inmate and the inmate loses it and kills him, uh, kills both of them and their deaths, uh, are, are, uh, both decent, you know, not bad, Could, uh, you know, nothing crazy good, but good, better than anything in cold prey. I'm telling you, man, all the, all the kills outside of one kill in the, in cold prey too, everything else is just off screen trash to me and I don't understand the love for them. Because I'm going to not give it a very favorable review here as soon as I'm done with this one. I just, it was okay. It was better than the first one, in my opinion. But anyway, we'll, we'll save for that. Save it for that. Um, <laughs> I like how he's, he comes up with the idea like, oh, let's break into this amusement park ride. And they're like, and they're like, I don't know. And he's like, why? And it's like, why would we be opposed to breaking and entering? Hmm, I don't know. Let me think. I just, the reaction of his, like, why? Like, why not? It's like, what do you mean, why not? Have you never heard of the legal system? Have you never heard of laws? <laughs> why not? They pick up a hitchhiker. Now, this is the hot chick. This is the one that shows her tits. And it's like, yeah, right. This is what you always think. I don't know if I've ever told this story on the channel. But I have to do it right now. Um, so... <laughs> All right, so when I was uh, living in Sedona, I still live outside of Sedona. Anyway, I'm going to try to make this as fast as humanly possible. I picked up a hitchhiker at Safeway. She was some super cute chick, and she was like, hey, can I get a ride? Like, if you're going somewhere? And I'm like, sure. So I'm like, where, where are you going? And she's like, I'm going to the library. And I was like, I don't even know if she asked me for a ride. I don't remember how it all went down, but she was in Safeway, right outside of Safeway. And... um Maybe I started talking with her, flirting with her or whatever. She's like, I'm going to the library. And I was like, you want me to take you there? And she's like, sure. And so now I'm driving. First off, I start backing out. This guy starts honking his horn at me. And there was no reason for it at all. I was just backing out. Absolutely ridiculous for him to honk his horn as much as it. And I pull up next to him because I was backing out. He was coming this way and I was coming out. So like my car pulled up right next to his and I fucking rolled down my window. And I was like, what the fuck is your problem? Like, with this girl in the car. And I'm thinking, I, in the moment, I'm so mad at the guy. I'm not even thinking I'm probably scaring this chick. I, sh I expected to half look over when I was done and heard it got out of the car. He's like, you motherfucker, this and that. Like, going off on me over nothing. And I was like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like, you know, anyway, I have a, I have a temper and I, I, I'm trying to work on it. Anyway, so I then drive off and I was like, ah, oh, sorry for that. And she's just looking forward, just super creepily looking forward. And I'm like, so, uh, what are you going to the library for? And she's like, I'm doing research. And she's like looking straight ahead, not looking at me, not looking at me. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's cool. And I could talk to her for a little, like maybe a couple more sentences exchanged. She's like, uh-huh. Like really like lackadaisical, like really like super like kind of staring off into space. And almost like she wasn't there. <laughs> and then I was like, so like, what are you doing research on? And then she just fucking like, she focuses and she looks over at me and is like, serial killers. All super creepy and low like that. I don't know if she was like trying to scare me because she was scared by the guy in the car or me by the guy in the... And she was like, uh, how do I do this? A defense mechanism? But it was creepy as fuck. And I actually like, put my hand like down because I had like a knife <laughs> in my door. And I actually put my hand on the knife and I was like, anyway... And I drew over up and I, she got out and I was like, whoa, and I was like, bye. She didn't even say anything. She was just like, okay. And like got out and I was like, goodbye. Audios. What the fuck was wrong with me? 
I've picked up a couple hitchhikers in my life. Always cute chicks like like this, and every experience is horrid, horrid. I'm not gonna get into stories, but I told him one already. But my God, this guy's like, oh, I'm picking, and she ends up blowing, like giving him drugs that he wants and blowing him. <laughs> get the fuck out of here! And the it, the the decapitation blowjob scene is great. He's like, he's slicing her neck as she's blowing him. And he's like, oh, he's all into it. I don't know how. I mean, he's on drugs, so I'll forgive it. I don't know how the hell he doesn't notice that she's being like yanked on that way, whatever. She'd be biting down. Let's be realistic. That's like the whole thing in um, Shawshank. That's how Andy gets out of being freaking orally raped. Is uh, he's like, if you stick anything in my brain, you know, my hand, my teeth are going to clamp down and it'll take like freaking jaws of life to get my mouth open paraphrasing of course um but yeah i mean he's slicing her throat and somehow she's not biting down on his dick bullshit anyway it doesn't matter but he's slicing 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 and then see here's another like good moment for this guy shows that he's a decent dude he he's like oh baby thank you like come and give me a kiss he wants to kiss a girl on the mouth that he just met who just had his dick and his jizz in his inner mouth that maybe some guys are like, oh, that's fucking disgusting, whatever. But the, the, I don't know what else to say about that. <laughs> I'm just saying there's a lot that that I don't know. Maybe I'm an idiot for that, but yeah. Okay, that's way too much information. Moving on. Now I feel like I'm embarrassing myself. I don't. I'm not embarrassed. I'm not fucking embarrassed about shit. But yeah, that was great because he pulls her head up, and it actually detaches, but it like detaches with. A lot of ligaments and everything still kind of attached, so it like rips apart from the head, and like skin comes with it, and part of her body starts to fall as more of the neck starts to come out. It's great, man. He's like lifting it, it's like coming out of the body and blood and everything. Awesome stuff. And then the dude's just carrying around the head for a little while, and it's you know, it's a pretty fake head, but who gives a shit? The gore is on point. Uh, I know I'm jumping all over the place, so, um, yeah, so that guy says that the twins are his cousins, which ends up being bullshit, because it's actually the other dude that's his brother, Ham, and, uh, but really all I was getting at is, like, of all the hot hitchhikers I've picked up, none have blown me, and then been decapitated, so, uh, which is usually what happens to hitchhikers. One, one person gets blown, and one person gets decapitated, I don't know. Or, you know, both, I don't know, <laughs> one or the other or both. Um, and the whole pretending to be dead uh, gimmick to the, for the setup and, and how he gets all pissed off and this and that, while it is a fucked up, and the look on his face is priceless. I mean, he is so just shocked and stunned that anyone would do this to him. He just can't, he can't fathom. That's actually really good acting on the guy's part because the way he looks, he's taken aback by the events of, of thinking that his, you know, uh, girlfriend had been killed and he's, you know, his mind is spinning and whatever. And then he has to realize that she played this prank on him. She thinks it's so funny. He's super embarrassed, but he's still kind of like emotionally traumatized for thinking she was dead. It's all a really good moment for him and, and the actor and all of that. That said, I really feel like this could have been built up a little more. Like, I don't need a full-on April Fool's Day where this whole thing at the end was a joke um, by any means. But I think that could have been set up just a little better. Just a little more. I don't know why. It's just he walks in and he sees her throat slit and then she's like, ah, I got you, like two seconds later. I guess that's enough. I mean, he's already so traumatized by that point that you don't need more. I guess I just watched enough movies where that happens where people are just kidding and on a, and it's really... It's a little more drawn out, so maybe it's what I'm I'm used to. But yeah, he does look fucked up enough, so maybe it is. Jen shows tits close up gratuitous. <laughs> That's my notes, people. That's my notes. <sighs> yeah, so Steve's body is strung up. I think we went. I was talking about this, but I think I got off track, probably because I was talking about kissing a girl after you, you know, they blow you, uh, getting snowballed. <laughs> but um. The way Steve's body looks, 
the dead look in his face, the the makeup, his arm. That's what was looking really, really cool. Like it's like half skinned and like hanging by like just like the bone or something, and it's like moving with the thing. It, it looks awesome. His body reveal, his his dead body looks fucking awesome. I was really, really I was like, oh wow, that's creepy as shit. You imagine if you walked in on that? Good stuff. Um and then so Big Daddy or Jim, he is stuck in there and he goes up to a glass window, a big glass window. And he, you know, this is a guy who refers to himself as Big Daddy. He's a pretty big dude. He just looks out and he's like, I guess I'm trapped. And he just turns around and goes right back into the mayhem. And it's like, he didn't even try to open that window. And he, if it isn't opening, break it. What? If he was Trish Jarvis, he would have just jumped right through the fucking thing. I couldn't believe he walks right up to a glass window and is just like, oh, and turns around. And I'm like, what are you doing? Go through it. You can see like the shit outside. You can tell that that's an exit. Unless I missed something. Is there bars there or something that I didn't notice? I mean, I was, I was making food a little bit while I was watching that scene. So I looked at it and I was like, what? Why are you not breaking this window? I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Uh, and then he walks out, so, so Jim walks out, or Big Daddy, I'm just gonna say Big Daddy, uh, not the Adam Sandler movie. <laughs> kangaroo song, kangaroo song, all right! Fucking douchebag kangaroo. Um, so he walks out, and there's this jumping mannequin that comes at him, and he full go, he goes on fucking full Happy Gilmore on this thing. I hate that fucking clown! Like, he just beats the shit out of this thing. Which I found to be really funny and made me like him even more. That said, he beats the shit out of a mannequin. Now, I'm not saying this is unbelievable, because it isn't. But you would think he'd have that same, you know, spunk and tenacity to uh, to, to fight back against the killer uh, in that moment. Not just, like, drop to his knees and be like, no, please. Um... Like the chick in Friday the 13th Part 2 who's just sitting there and waiting for a uh, freaking bruised thumbnail Jason to just end her. Yeah. No, no, please, 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 please. 20 fucking minutes later, he's, he's killing her. Um, so she texts, or he texts her saying help. And she gets the text and then just turns right around and comes back. I can't even get a girl to fucking return my text for nothing lately and this guy says help and she is safe she's good she's gone she's done she's out all is well in the world for her and she decides to turn the car around risking her life to come back and then she drives her car this is the biggest bullshit moment in the car in the whole thing she just blindly drives her fucking the van right through um a a wall and the dude is standing, he's got Big Daddy on his knees, that sounds like a porno, um, and he's about to kill him, Van comes through, only hits him, she blindly drives it through a wall, not knowing anyone's even in the room at all, so who knows, she just drives it through the wall, I'm guessing like to open up something for them, it doesn't hit him, who he's still holding by the way, and he throws him, launches him into this spiked wall. A real spiked wall, by the way. You know, even though this is a dark ride fun house, those are real metal spikes up on the wall. And they just so happen to be positioned in that place where he gets launched into them. Sure, why not? And then Ham comes out, reveals that this was all some revenge thing, I guess. I'm not really sure. I, I Because... They weren't nice to him? I don't fucking know. And it just so happened his brother broke out two weeks previously. And they and and Jen, or not Jen, um, Kathy. Kathy just so happens to want revenge at that same time. It's all so convenient and silly. And as I said, who cares though? It's fun. It On IMDb, this is listed as a remake of The Fun House. I think that's bullshit. But that is how it is listed on there. Anyway, uh, and then he just, he lets Kathy go, but not Jim? What did Jim do that Kathy didn't? Like, what, I'm not, I'm not understanding the slaughter high, terror train, fucking revenge tale here. 
You know, a lot of slasher movies are, are revenge tales. Like, the, they, he was bullied, this and that. Yeah, his roommate was kind of a dick. I mean, as much as I didn't like his roommate and all this, and he cheated on his girlfriend, you don't, de- you don't deserve to die because you cheated on your girlfriend, okay? Let's get that shit straight. I just... <laughs> I didn't really understand what his deal was. Because he said his brother killed for him, and he liked to play. So this is just for fun? So if it's just for fun and his brother's killing for him, then he never really did any of the killings, and so he just decides to kill Jim now for some reason, but let Kathy go? Like, that's all so confusing to me. I don't understand any of that. I don't understand his motives. I don't understand his decisions. I don't understand a fucking bit of it. So, whatever. If someone can explain that ending to me, then that'll make more sense. But he's like, thanks, Kathy. Thanks for the help. Thanks for the help. Okay, thank you for the help. The help on what? Getting revenge? Because he says something about revenge. Something, but like, he's like fucking assholes. Like when they're in there, one of their flashbacks. And he's talking about all of them. But I guess he likes Kathy. He's got a crush on her. Is that what it is? He's in love with her or something. And he lets her go. I don't fucking know. As I said, I was making a little food. I was trying to pay as best attention as I could. I, I, I feel like I caught it all. So I, maybe I missed one little line or one little image. That would have made it all make sense to me. But I just really like Big Daddy. And I was bummed that he stabbed him. And then I was like, well, here he's going after Kathy. And the, and the cops are coming. So he's exposed. She knows who he is. Like, he's going to jail. He's getting, like, why wouldn't he kill her? So that he could be like, oh, it was him, not me. He's the killer. You know, we came. And I, my, it's, you know, yeah, it's my brother. But I didn't realize he'd be bad. Whatever. Be better than her just walking out and exposing him. So I don't know. That makes zero sense to me. Uh, other than that, though, man, I, I did really enjoy this flick. Um, at first, I thought it was going to be because of the 90s feel and the douchey kind of characters that I thought was going to be a set up here. And yeah, the very tropey uh, cliches and whatnot. I was like, yeah, I can see why this is getting a 4.1. But as it went on and the gore and the tits and the characters developed, I was like, I dug this. Not awesome, but a fucking good slasher. So, there you go. Anyways, so thank you to Peter Benavente. I will get on Cry Wolf and stay alive very, very soon, I can assure you. Adios.